If you run macOS and want to manage your application windows and spaces entirely with your keyboard, you need a tiling window manager. There are a few options out there like Amethyst or Yabai, but I like Aerospace the most. In this video, I'm going to show you my keyboard driven window management workflow based on Aerospace, Sketchy Bar and Janky Borders and you'll learn how you can create your own customized setup. Hi, I'm Marco. Let's get started. I'm just going to show you my setup first and explain the concept along the way. We have a single western window opened up and it takes up the whole available space. On the top left you also can see Sketchy Bar. If we now create a new window, we see the already existing window gets sized down and the new window is placed on the right side. Let's just go into my dot files directory here and create a new window. We see again the existing windows get resized and the new windows placed on the right side. Maybe you also notice the borders around the windows. These have different colors. The active window is marked red. I can use aerospace shortcuts to move the focus to other windows now. I can also change the layout from horizontal to vertical and back again to horizontal. I can also resize windows. Internally aerospace uses a tree structure to manage the windows. I could join windows together into a node. So maybe you want to have this kind of layout. Let's bring in another window. Just open the browser here. It gets placed into the active node. I can also move this out of there. Can switch the layout of this node around. Maybe join the browser window with the right terminal window. You can basically do any sort of combination of these vertical and horizontal tiles nested into each other. I can also reset the layout. So now we've just got the basic horizontal tiles. Move focus again. My screen recording tool gets in the way sometimes right now. Maybe I want to maximize this whole window. Make it small again. I can also maximize it respecting the gaps I set up. So we can still see sketchy bar on top. Let's make it smaller again. So far we've only seen the tile space layout. There's also an accordion layout. Let's quickly switch to that. Now there's one window in front and you can see on the left side and on the right side some overlapping of the other windows here. We can move focus again. So now we're on the leftmost window. Let's get back to the right. Clean shot X gets in the way again. So this was the accordion from left to right. We can also do it from top to bottom. Or get back to the tile space layout. These gaps in between are configurable. The borders and the gaps are a little bit bigger for the screen recording right now. My actual setup is a little bit more dense. And so far we've been only working with one workspace. You can see on the top left there's my sketchy bar config. There are two sections there. 7, 8 and 9 are number of workspaces. These are placed on the secondary monitor that is to my left here. It's just my laptop screen. I use this for secondary stuff. I can't really show it to you through the screen recording now. On the right side of the pill are the workspaces on my main monitor, 1 to 6. These workspaces are a similar concept to the spaces in macOS. So you basically have multiple virtual monitors. Just let me show you. So I can send the focus window to another workspace with a shortcut. It disappears from this workspace, but if we now switch to workspace 2, this workspace has only this window. We can instantly switch between the workspaces also to empty workspaces and maybe create some other window here. Unfortunately, when I switch workspaces, you can't see me anymore because my screen recording tool is also placed on workspace one. So if I go back to this, you see I'm back again. Ooh. Hi. You can also pull out windows from the window tiling here. So I can just use my mouse to place it anywhere I want and it won't be auto tiled. I can also place it back into the tiling and it gets handled automatically again. Some windows don't handle automatic resizing very well, like the settings app, for example. Let me open that. So by default, Aerospace ignores some windows of some applications. They can still be focused and you can just put them into the automatic tiling. But you see this doesn't really work because of some limitations of this window. I can still move it around though, but it's overlapping the other ones. So I'll just pull it out again. So let's close this up again. Also, let's close Brave. Another feature of Aerospace is that you can define shortcuts to launch applications or switch to applications. So if I press my shortcut to launch Brave, it just appears here. So Aerospace is also kind of an app launcher. Let's place Brave on the second workspace. And if I now press my shortcut to launch Brave or switch to Brave, I instantly switch to this. Oh, and we still had the other terminal window in here. 
so Aerospace just did its tiling thing. In recent versions, you can also define shortcuts to change your volume, but I don't have that configured because I use my keyboard for that. So these are the basics. You probably also noticed my shortcut combinations with all modifiers combined, which is like a virtual hyper key that I programmed into my keyboard. So this is quite easy for me to press and I don't have any key binding clashes that way, but the default bindings are based on option and option shift or alt and alt shift. We're gonna look at the setup process next and then we'll also go through the default shortcuts. So I just uninstalled Aerospace, Janky Borders and Sketchy Bar and removed my configuration files. Now we'll go through the installation and configuration of these from scratch again. This is Aerospace's GitHub page. I'll link it in the description below. Also, there will be a link to my dot files. So if you like my configurations, maybe you can have a look at it there. So in the Aerospace GitHub page, we see Aerospace is still in beta, but I use it daily. You can also find more infos on the key features here, the inner workings of Aerospace, how its tree paradigm works, installation instructions, and a link to another website with a more detailed guide. But let's just start with the installation here. I'm gonna copy this command, open up a terminal, of course, now that I uninstalled Aerospace, I don't have this fancy tiling windows anymore. So it's a little bit messy right now, but let's just go on. So we're gonna paste this here. Man, that was easy, right? <laughs> let's get back to the notes here and see what we have to do next. Let's scroll back up and maybe just go to the Aerospace guide. This is kind of bright. Okay, let's go to the installation part. The brew install we already did. So how do we configure this? We need to create a configuration file, either in our home directory or in this xdg config home. So let's just download the default config and put it in our home, save it as aerospace terminal. Don't forget the leading dot. Thanks Brave, we know what you're doing here. So let's go back to the terminal. Oh, and we even haven't started aerospace yet. So let's just start aerospace. We see automatic tiling is already working. Let's open up the config file and just go through this. Let's move the terminal window to another workspace for that. So there are lots of useful comments in here. So we've got the possibility to run commands after login or after the startup of Aerospace. I use this after startup command to run sketchy bar and janky borders. Come to think of it, let's just install them first. Back to the browser on workspace one. Open up the sketchy bar GitHub. Some installation instructions. Just gonna copy that. Also using brew. Let's switch back to our terminal. Put this in the background for now, paste the command, and we get some instructions here to copy an example configuration to the right place. Let's just do this here. I'm just gonna use West Terms copy mode for that. So now I just have to paste this. If we now would start sketchy bar, it should be working. But let's just install janky borders first and then use Aerospace's configuration file to set up all three programs starting up together. So back to the browser, open up another tab. Thank you, Borders. There's installation instructions here. Go back to the terminal, paste this in, and that's it. Let's go back to the aerospace configuration file. Now we can utilize this after startup command, and we want to do something like this. Exec and forget sketchy bar. Copy this. Change this to Borders. Janky Borders is called Borders. And then let's just skip a little bit ahead right now. Search for gaps. Let's make the gap a little bit bigger for the recording settings. Save this. So now that we saved this, let's just restart Aerospace. I'm gonna use all of it to focus Aerospace now and press Command Q to close it. Now I open it up again, again using all of it. Now we see the new config gets loaded. Also, this bar appears on the top. That is sketchy bar with the default configuration. Our windows are back on one workspace again. Aerospace doesn't remember the placement from before the restart. Let's just put West Term on space two again and switch to it. Maybe you noticed on the top left in sketchy bar, there's also a number placed there. And maybe you thought this was the workspace number, but by default, it's really the macOS spaces that are shown there. So we still don't really see which workspaces we have open in Aerospace. Let's just have a look at Aerospace website again. Let's scroll back to the top, go to Aerospace Goodies, and on the left, the sixth point, show Aerospace workspaces in Sketchy Bar. This after startup command we already did. Let's just grab this, go back to our config file, and just paste this in somewhere here. Let's go back to the browser. You see, we also have to do something in Sketchy Bar's configuration. Copy this stuff. Actually, let's just place this on space two so we have this side by side with our terminal. 
Sorry, I just noticed that my key capturing tool is not really helpful right now. So <laughs> I just used the default key bindings for that, which you can also see in the aerospace default config file we are currently using. So Alt 2 to switch to the workspace 2 and Alt Shift 2 to send something to workspace 2. So we already copied this. Let's open up the sketchy bar RC. Actually just copy this. We're gonna replace this section which shows the default spaces of macOS. There's something more there. Nope. Okay, paste. Save this. We also need to create this plugin file here. Let's copy this. Create this new file. Paste this in. Save and close. We also don't need this anymore, but we still need to do this part. So just copy this back to the terminal, put this in the background again, paste. And that should do it. Let's close up Aerospace and Sketchy Bar. Gonna use some terminal tool for that. Start Aerospace back up again. Oh wow, now we have many, many spaces up there. Let's focus the terminal again. Move it to the second space. Switch to the second space. So here we have a little bit more screen real estate to work with. We're gonna reduce the amount of pre-configured workspaces a little bit later. For now, let's just go on with looking at the config from top to bottom. So here you can configure if you wanna start aerospace at login. I always set this to true because I always wanna use it. The normalization settings are fine. If you wanna know more about them, just read the documentation. This is the setting for the accordion padding we saw before. Here you choose the default root container layout. By default, it's the tiling mode default root container orientation. A short explanation of that is right here in the config. This setting is when you have multiple monitors. When you focus another display, the mouse cursor is automatically placed in the center. I leave this on the default as well. You can turn off the macOS hide application shortcut. If you use an alternate keyboard layout and don't want to manually change the shortcuts, then you can just switch the preset here. These are the gap settings. The inner settings are the spaces between the windows. The outer settings are the spaces around the root container. Then we come to the key bindings. Aerospace works with different modes. The default mode is main. So in this section, we find the bindings for the main mode. You can see which keys you can use for bindings. And down here, the actual bindings are being done. Starting from the top here, you see bindings for changing up the layout, for changing window focus, moving windows around, resizing windows, switching to workspaces. Here we're gonna change something because I don't wanna have all the workspaces from one to 10 and from A to Z with a few exceptions. So one through nine are fine. I will throw away all the others. Then there are the bindings for moving nodes to these workspaces. Also here I will remove a bunch of them. Here are shortcuts for switching back and forth between workspaces. With this shortcut, you can move a workspace to another monitor. With this shortcut, you can move workspaces to another display. So maybe you wanna move your workspace to a secondary monitor to keep it open and work on your main monitor on, the, on some different things. You can use this shortcut for that. And this shortcut switches into service mode. You can also define your own modes. So in each different mode, you can use the same shortcuts for different things you wanna do. Here are the different bindings in service mode that are default. You switch to the service mode with Alt Shift semicolon. We already did this before. To reload the config, then you just press Escape. The shortcut also puts you back in main mode. So in these key bindings, you can define arrays. This way you can chain different actions together. So Escape reloads the config and then puts you back in main mode. This flattened workspace tree resets your layout. With this, you toggle the windows into floating mode. And with this one, you close all windows on the active workspace, but the focused one. Then here are the shortcuts to join windows together. And finally, some volume control. In my own configuration, I told you before, I think, I changed all the shortcuts up to use some virtual hyper key, but you don't have to do that. These default shortcuts are fine, so we can leave it like that, but you can modify them however you want, of course. But we won't do that in this video. So we removed a bunch of workspace keybinds. Let's restart Aerospace and Sketchy Bar again and see what we get. Don't forget to save the file first. Put new in the background. Let's clean this up a little. Kill aerospace borders in sketchy bar again. Now start up aerospace again. And now you see, hmm, we have 10 workspaces. That's because we defined nine of them, but we also have a secondary monitor and aerospace just creates a new workspace for that. Let's fix this issue by assigning at least one of the workspaces to the secondary monitor. Let's look up how to do that in the aerospace guide. So you see there's a bunch of ways to do that. I'm just gonna copy the first line here. Go back to my terminal. Go to the section before the bindings. 
paste this here and let's assign workspace 9 to the secondary monitor permanently. We could reload aerospace configuration file, but Sketchybar wouldn't update, so I'm gonna restart everything. You don't have to see this, right? So after the restart, we only have nine workspaces left. Number nine is fixed on the secondary display now. The only problem I see with this is you cannot move the workspaces that are assigned to specific monitors dynamically anymore. That's too bad. Maybe there will be some workaround in a future version or something like that. There are a few more commands and things you can do with aerospace. I recommend sticking to the aerospace guide and documentation if you want to learn more about that. We also had a quick look at the default configuration of Sketchybar. I won't get into detail. We just used the base configuration that Sketchybar gives you and just added the aerospace workspaces. I won't get into more details because Sketchybar is a real rabbit hole. You can do a bunch of stuff. If you want to be inspired, go to Sketchybar's GitHub. Here you can see a first example. I think this is the setup of the creator of Sketchybar, but also there are many, many more setups. Just click here. And you can scroll through these and see a bunch of setups. Also with dot files, you can even accommodate for the notch. Yeah, a bunch of cool setups here. You saw my setup in the beginning. My sketchy bar setup is inspired by NeoVim's Lua line with the Tokyo Night theme. And you can have a look at it in my dot files. It's quite minimal at the moment and there's still some to do's, but I like it. If you want to have a look, just use it or go with one of these great setups here. So let's also take a quick look at Janky Borders. This is Janky Borders GitHub site. We've already installed it. If you scroll down a little bit, you see also the bootstrap with aerospace. We didn't exactly configure it like that. You can also use a config file for that. And my dot files, I use a config file, but for the sake of this video, we will just go with this default configuration. So let's take this line here, copy it, go back to our editor. Back in the configuration file, let's jump to line 13. Replace this line with the line we just copied. To be able to see janky borders a little bit better, we'll go to the gaps section and configure them again. Let's change them all to 24. Save this. Restart everything again. Now we see the changed gaps. I changed the outer top gap to 48 so that we still see our sketchy bar right now. But you can see the new gaps configuration. You also see the borders configuration. The light colored border shows the active window. If we switch the window now, you see the browser is active. And that's basically everything there is to it. So here you can see my actual config again. Well, not really because these are the recording settings. Just let me show you my day-to-day -day settings. So actually it looks like this. If you look at the bottom of my terminal window, you can see Lua line and NeoVim. And on the top left, you can see my sketchy bar. I'm going for a similar but slightly different look for my sketchy bar. So this is my keyboard-driven macOS window management setup using aerospace, sketchy bar, and janky borders. If you want to know about seven Vim tricks that I wish I learned sooner, click this video here. Thanks for watching. See you around and take care.